So Peter Schiff says that gold ETFs could explode and leave their holders with worthless paper claims. Today we explore three shocking risks that ETFs are exposed to and then consider who ultimately they may actually be suitable for. So let's dive on in. Now this channel offers global macro insights for informed investing so do consider subscribing. So gold ETFs are securities that track the price of gold. They are liquid, easily traded and theoretically provide convenient exposure to the gold price. However there's some key points investors need to be aware of which is why Peter Schiff is so wary of these ETFs. He's also a physical bullion dealer of course but certainly I believe that his reasons here appear justified. First up, the gold ETFs are a form of indirect rather than direct ownership of gold. This is because it is the intermediary rather than the individual investor that actually owns the precious metal. This is a, a really important point to bear in mind, but if we actually back up slightly, we know the key reason why people actually invest in gold is to avoid counterparty risk. This is why gold is in such demand during the insolvency phase of a financial crisis and trust between different counterparties, banks and businesses breaks down. Yet gold ETFs are dependent not just upon the trust, which for GLD is SPDR Gold Trust, but also the custodian who is appointed by the Gold Trust to actually look after the gold itself. For GLD it's HSBC, a bank which is already under quite some financial strain. Yet HSBC appoints sub-custodians to look after the gold, which may include Barclays, the Bank of England, JP Morgan, among others. And according to Oliver Garrett, the CEO of Risk Hedge, custodians only insure the contents of the vaults for limited general insurance rather than the market value of the gold itself. Imagine if the financial sector takes a really severe hit and a counterparty fails, the investor has no recourse and gold ETFs will fail while the gold price may actually be soaring. Secondly, buying into a gold ETF really reflects you buying a share in the trustee itself rather than gold. You become a shareholder of the trust, not a gold holder. You simply have a paper claim on gold. This is again contrary to the reasons why investors actually buy gold. That is to act as a store of value during crises. Our final reason is a real shocker and relates to what we have recently seen in the WTI oil market where the price of oil went from $15 to negative $40 in just a few hours. This is something that Peter Schiff and others have discussed for the oil sector. It occurred as those speculators holding long positions expecting price rises couldn't actually take delivery and store that oil. They then had to pay people to take these contracts off their hands as they had no means or desire to actually collect on this oil. Ultimately some gold ETF providers do not own physical metal directly but have exposure through future contracts or option paper contracts much like in the oil sector. So could gold blow up in the same way that oil did? This is a question a few people have asked me in the comments uh, and the answer is certainly yes. And the consequences of this would be absolutely dire. But let's break this down. Storing gold is a lot easier than storing hundreds or thousands of barrels of oil. Moreover, the excess demand for gold in recent months together with those three Ds, the debasement, the deficits and the debt would mean that the blow up would be on the positive side which we'll come to in just a second. But let's just understand the COMEX gold market and the way in which this exchange works. First, it's not 100% reserve and does not require proof of gold ownership. Thus the COMEX system works as a fractional reserve gold pit where paper gold contracts are far, far greater than the actual physical gold holding. This is a dangerous system where in normal market conditions everything seems absolutely fine. Speculators short gold contracts in the hope that the gold price will fall but rarely have ownership over any metal. Meanwhile those taking long positions bet on price rises and will tend to roll over contracts rather than take delivery. 
they may be happy with their trade position and expect future price rises to actually take place. But in the event of a market panic, perhaps a scenario which has caused a sudden and dramatic unexpected rise in the price of gold, such as taking out an Iranian military target as we saw earlier this year, some holding long contracts may actually notify COMEX that they wish to take delivery of their gold. If you're short betting on a price fall, you need to close that trade before further price rises take place, but you don't have the gold and then have to buy physical at a real premium to meet delivery. And so on one side of the trade, the shorts who were betting on the actual price falls and hence sold their perceived gold ownership need to get their hands on the physical product to give to the longs who are requesting delivery. Now the market faces a stampede here where short sellers are desperately trying to actually get their hands on the physical metal uh, before the price rises further. Meanwhile those with the long positions know that there is a finite supply of physical gold available. This would send the gold price soaring just in the same way that we saw the oil price crash in the space of hours. An absence of gold behind these paper contracts could blow up the entire COMEX system and send gold soaring while gold ETFs collapse. This concern has been reinforced with the persistent differential between the COMEX and the LBMA spot price in London in recent weeks. While theoretically these contracts could be settled in monetary terms, what regular viewers will be all too aware of is that gold's biggest competitor is the US dollar. When gold is strong, the US dollar internationally is weak and vice versa as we can see here. So if gold prices are exploding upwards rapidly, the US dollar will be collapsing as a global stampede takes place out of dollars and dollar assets towards gold and other risk-off assets such as silver or Bitcoin. In contrast, when the oil market blew up, the physical supply was actually there. With the COMEX system, there will be insufficient physical metal to actually meet demand. However, there is one caveat to this argument, and that is that those with long positions must actually have the funds to actually take delivery of the physical product. Generally, this is not the case. Meanwhile, those with short positions will try to actually close their trade with the purchase of long futures. So this argument is highly dependent upon traders having the means and the desires to actually take delivery of the physical gold itself. Could it happen? Certainly it appears to be a clear risk which is inherent within the COMEX system and it is that for this reason that gold money ranks ETFs as one of the riskiest means to actually invest in gold while physical bullion avoids all counterparty risk of course. But personally, I think gold ETFs are almost best used if making short-term rather than longer-term investments. I would much prefer to invest in mining stock where, yes, there is counterparty risk and the potential for market liquidations, but if the macro outlook remains very positive for these commodities and you do your homework on the companies, uh, it's a better long-term option than gold ETFs and in the case of uh, COMEX explosion, gold mines would actually become our new central banks creating money not through printing but through expertise, innovation and effort. Now if you'd like to know why gold miners face such a positive perfect storm do check out this video here. Thanks so much for joining me, hit that like button, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.